Reading started with a hard guy. Do you remember how to read vigorously? Vigorously. Hi. Uh, oh boy. Yoku. That's not E in it. So. It's three sounds in it. Isogu. Isogu is a good guess, but it's E. Ki. Iki o. Iki o. I. Yoku. So, Iki o is what is above the kanji. Iki o. Iki o. I. Yoku. Hi. Iki o. I. So let's go read this um previous sentence that we read previously at some point. So shokudo no doa ga ikyo iyoku shimatta. Right. What does this mean? Shokudo no doa ga the door of the cafeteria it slams shut yep it slams shut it's perfect that's a perfect way of describing that um so this is goal and what happens when we have this kanji right here you know? it's repetition so, so, so. goal 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 goal, goal is goal. a sound effect However, it does have kanji if you're like, I don't know when you see the kanji, maybe in a visual novel, those tend to have obnoxious amount of kanji in it. But Google is a sound effect that happens to have kanji that has a lot of cars in it, which makes it actually a really nice kanji because a lot of cars make a loud roaring noise because Google is a roaring noise. Oh, I... um, how do you read this word? Ikio. Iyoku. Perfect. So let's go read the line from the book. Sono hashi no shita o kawa ga go go to oto o tatete iki o iyoku nagarete iru. So the verb is violently. It violently uh, flows. Okay. What is violently flowing? The water, or the, the, the river, the kawa. Okay. Violently flow with the, making the sound go, go. Okay. And where is it flowing? Um, it flows beneath that bridge perfect um, kanji check um do you remember how to read the midnight bridge dark night bridge kami yo bashi Ayami yo bashi how about left and right the hard one left and right uh sai um sai sa close close ma. sai you sai you, Lan you short sa you oh, how do you read this word sensei so 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 how do you think you read this word sento so your sensei if you're on a field trip it's going to be standing sento which is the front of whoever is like leading a group so it's not it doesn't mean to lead but it means to stand like in front of everybody um to is head and sometimes it's used to count animals, so like the leader of the herd could be another way you could try remembering it. But sento means you're taking the lead in like when you're walking somewhere. You're here. But not necessarily that people are following you, it just means like you're in front. Sento. So it starts with sen. Sento. Do you know what it ended with? Sento, taking the lead. So, so. Um, oh. Or Thank taking you. the front, basically. Hi. So, sento ni tatta machutsushi wa hashite iru. Hi. So, you see, we have tatta 
and hashteiru. Tata is basically the verb that just takes sento, so you can think about it. So it's not saying he's, I mean, he has to be tataing if he's um doing that. But basically, I guess you could say standing in Japanese doesn't have to be stationary. Doesn't have to be stationary. Tate, tate. So he stand in the front. The magician that stands in the front, he runs. Yep. So in English, we probably say who's in the lead or something like that. Run saying he stands in front because in English, stand has to be stationary. You can't have someone standing and running. That doesn't make any sense in English. But in Japanese, it does make sense. That's probably part of the reason why we have tachi domaru. Remember that word, which is the stand and stop, because it's letting you know that the main character has stopped running, but it's still continuing to stay on their feet. So perhaps tatsu might be more accurately translated as to be on your feet, rather than really to be stand in a way, just because of how it's used in Japanese. In ways that English is not fully compatible. Because you can't really say the magician standing in front is running. That doesn't sound right. Versus the magician in lead um, is running. In the lead. Magician in the lead is running. Yeah, Hashi. Um, I guess I was double checking if you remembered that. But anyway, let's go read this sentence. Neburi wa iae iae ni hasar mareta. Ah, ka. Haya, hai, um. Kurai, kurai. Kurai yami yo bashi o. Sento ni tate tsunde ir. Hasamareta. So the one doing hasamareta, as you can see, ending with ta, is the kuroi yami yobashi. Nebri, he is doing sento ni tate tsundeita. So Neburi, he continues in the lead. Hi. Shooting forward in the lead. Across what do you think? At the at the um shadow evening bridge. Perfect. And is it well lit? Is it dark? So so. And, and what also, else about this bridge? How's the houses are Sasamareta? Hasamareta. Or one after another, right? That's a good guess. Hasama is how we've seen this word before when Bennett, when, sorry, uh, when Khan was talking about his muffins. He would hasama a piece of cheese in between his ham, which would have some jam. I'm sorry, between his um, muffins. He would hasama a piece of cheese. What do you think hasama means? He um wedges it. Hi, hi, hi. Put it in between. So it's a hi. he wedges. We put it. in between. So that would be oh something is put in between two things. So here it is passive. Asamareta. So the bridge was putted in between by the um houses. So the houses the are house. yeah. on the side. They're doing the, um. They're doing the betweening. The, they I, they doing they, the act of putting the bridge in the middle. Between it, yeah, exactly. So this would be muffin, right? Muffin ni hasamareta cheese. Hi. So yeah, that's that's what the bridge is. In, little houses. In Japanese, like it take it still take me a hard time to kind of wrap my head around how all the objects are doing the verb 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely confusing. But basically with passive, me is the one that does the forcing of the action. So if it's I put cheese between, I will be getting the ni if it's a passive sentence and we'll be getting ga if it's a normal sentence. But all sentences are always going to take o for their object. So whether or not it's a passive sentence, a causative sentence, or a normal sentence, o is always marking the same thing. Um, right. That's why you can say um, ude o tsukamu. But you can also say ude o uh, tsukamareru. Both of these are correct um, ways to say the arm was grabbed. I grabbed the arm because the object doesn't change. But what gets marked by me and ga does change between these two sentences. So right here, it'd be like, um, like, ore no ude o My arm is grabbed. Uh, so this would be... Um, Right, right here it'd be that kind of idea. I guess I want to do ga here. And same with um causative form, which would be the opposite with um to make someone grab an arm. But yeah, O would still be used there. So yeah, um that's I think that was part of what you were asking. Hi. Yes. That makes sense. Um, do you know what this is read as? This time block word? Um, Perfect. So as you can see right here, we're doing the same thing we did with Shunkan earlier today, where we have a noun that's being used as a time phrase to mean basically when or while or anything like that. This is while talking. But it's never going to be the 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 this time phrase is never going to have any other meaning like getting close to that time or I don't know talking about the time is <laughs> not never what's going to be mean just because of how it's used in Japanese as a way to say when. So in this case, it means while because Ida is a different kind of block of time than Shunkan. So Ida, as I told you, can mean like a block of time, which I've said like three to five times less five seconds because it doesn't have to just be about time and the next sentence is going to be just talking about a block of space because Japanese is space and time tend to be very mixed together in a lot of words like with tokoro can refer to both same with um aida in a way aida can refer to both time like jikan and in this context when um, and also like a physical space between two objects. Hey. For example, could you read this word for me? Tsukima. Tsukima. This ma right here is that kanji aida. And suki is gap. So a tsukima is just like a gap. The difference between suki on its own is that the suki insinuates like the not like a space gap necessarily. It's like um a chink in one's armor, if you know that that phrase. I see. Kind of like that idea. It just means something is not seamed close. <laughs> kind of. Uh, so this is the space that there is nothing in, basically. Hi. Um, can you read this Suki. for me? Ie to ie no aida no tsukima. Hi. The space between the space between the houses. Right. Which is a sukima. <laughs> so it's a kind of convoluted sentence. So it's the the it's the gap that is made from the space between two houses would be like a way to illustrate how the words are a little bit different. Um but yeah, it's very similar idea. So the sukima is just is like this. It's like a noun, and this is more like that's a incidental place. The gap 
which is the space between two houses. Um, yeah, between space between two houses. Do you remember to read this word? Okay. What does that mean? Saka, 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 no. Saka, no, Tochu, no, Waki, Michi. On the way, on the way, on the way up to here. Basically, hi. On the way. How about Semakte from Semai? Semakte. Kison, Soma. Okay, so Imakte is a verb of some sort, so. That's a good uh, guess. Someone... It is actually the te form of a e adjective, which kind of makes it. Yeah. Yeah. Semite. Semite. So, is it that mean narrow? Yes. Hi, hi, hi. Semakte. And the reason is in the te form is because it's modifying the following adverb. I'm guessing. No, it's it's modifying the following um not adjective as well. It's That's so it's if it said semaku, semaku q, then yeah. Um te just basically means and. So it's not saying narrow steep staircase, it's saying narrow and steep staircase. I mean stairs. It's stairs that are steep and narrow. So it's has it's in te form for the word and to be in there. Otherwise, you'd have to say a narrow, narrow steep staircase, which does also make sense. So a narrow steep staircase vs a narrow and steep staircase. So with one hand on the wall. I go down the steep stairs, the steep and narrow staircase. Um, in a way, I guess it is kind of doing that. It just it feels more narrow than if it did said semaka. Um, the the degree of skinniness this feels more dramatic, basically. But I... I, um. Let's go read this sentence. The sentence read as um to hashi no tochu de fuita surprise fui surprise fui fui ni ie to ie no Aida no semai sukima ni ite iku. So you're correct that this is used to mean surprise, and here it's sud suddenly. And can you read this guy again for me? Look at it closely. It's hi te. Hi, hi, hi. It goes in. Afterward, while well, he was on the way, he was on the way, uh, he was, while he was on the bridge, or while he was crossing the bridge, um, the, he, he goes into the uh, semi- Semai sukima ni. Uh, the sukima is the gap. So the narrow gap. He goes into the narrow gaps. That is the space, the ida of between the two of the two houses of right. the ie to ie. Um, and then why does it say fui ni? Surprisingly, why does it surprising? So, fui can mean to... surprising. In this context, it means suddenly. 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 And what do you think it's modifying so with this was... knee versus this knee? We have two different knees here. 
uh, he's modifying he's modifying the action of Haite Ike. Hi. So they suddenly enter the gap that it, the, the narrow gap that is in between two houses. When did they do this? Hi. Well, he was crossing the bridge. Pochu. On the way. Perfect. Perfect. And in group. You... The in group isn't actually specifically written here. So Nebody, he they're talking actually about Nebody. Nebody is leading the way. He's continuing forward. And then suddenly he enters a gap in between two houses. So theoretically, it's not actually talking about what Khan is doing. We're actually still talking about Nebody. But most likely Khan is following him. That would make logical sense. But the to and the fuini is showing how sudden this action is. Nobody's just walking down this road and it goes boop, suddenly down the bridge. Um, suddenly. Um, um, so I have two words right. here that have the same kanji but have different readings and meanings. Tell me which is which. Um, oh, Oriru, Oriru is to go down. Hi. Oriru to go down. And Sagaru is to retreat. Perfect. Back. Nice. I feel like that's like one of the hardest things to learn. <laughs> it definitely is. Um. <laughs> so Oriru and Sagaru. Perfect. Okay. Next thing, what does this mean? Kaba no kikizutte. Kizuru. Kaban o. Kaban is a bag. Hi. And kikizutte. Hiki is to pull. Hi. Zut. Zuru. Zut. Zutte. Zutte is like. Oh, what is it there? It is basically, it means that when he's pulling this bag, he can't, it's like very heavy. He's like l lugging it around. Kind of almost insinuates it might be slightly dragging on the floor, but it doesn't have to be dragging on the floor. But it's that level of like hard to pick up kind of bag. So if you just hoisted it over your shoulder, you wouldn't be using hikizukiru. But if you're like, if it's heavy, then you use hikizute. Hikizute. So it's um, it's heavy. It it is heavy. It is very heavy. But it's saying he's he's pulling it. But so basically it's you're pulling something heavy, is what it means. Um any idea how to read this word? I think you can guess the readings. Um here is me tatsu. Something's a little so, bit wrong here. What do you think it is? And why that might be? Hi, hi, hi. Because me is its own thing and tatsu is its own thing. So da, me datsu. Um, so me datsu is to your eye, it stands, I means something stands out. So we say the same thing right. in English almost to stand out. But instead of here, it's even more obvious with the eye. Stands out to your eye. Yeah, that's it. And this is a verb, an u verb. Um, so you just have to tell me what the bold part means. The bold is ore wa nebu neburi o te. Neburi, I, I, o te is I follow, right? Basically. It doesn't mean catch up. It does it not mean catch up. I pursue. I Hi, follow. I pursue. I chase. I, I chase nobody. To catch up, you need to add something else in here, such as tuku, which is to attach. So oi um, tuku is to catch up, because it means you chase and then you attach yourself. Oi tuku. Um, how would you put this word, this verb, into negative form to stand out, to not stand out? 
meratsu. And then the negative is anai. So metanai. Medatanai. Hi. Medatanai. Perfect. Medatanai. Hi, hi. So let's go read the sentence. This might be our last sentence of the day. It is. All right. So this will be. Um, ore mo kaban o ikizuri nagara ben neburi to beneto o ote ie to ie no aida ni iri. Sono saki no medatta nai. Kaidan o orite ita. Hi. So what's really confusing is that we say iri guchi, right? Iri guchi. So it's a really like smart idea to assume this would be iri. However, iri would be ideru. Ideru. So it would be ire in that context. Here though, we have a di from, for example, hairu. Sorry. Uh, hairu which turns into hairimasu or hairi. Hairi. Hairi, hairimasu. Right. It still means to go in. Yes. Mm. You just got it in your head today what? about the weird iri mean reading, which um we talked about before. This is old and only occurs in old compound words and um, idioms. Like, this is not an idiom, so there's no reason to assume it would be pronounced as iri, like kiniri, which would be to in be interested in something. Um, so it only really works with, like, set phrases, because no one says it anymore, because it's not a word in the modern-day dictionary anymore. We have the same thing in English for a lot of random words that we don't use anymore, but certain words still stay um like pulling up by your bootstraps you know um what are bootstraps i don't know my boots don't have something called that on them uh so that's what iri is versus ireru and hairu which are still in use today on it so um uh do you know do you know why one might want to use haite in the te form as opposed to hairi so te, so hai so we're talking about te form versus stem form right here right so the difference between uh, i just dropped my pen so right here we have um what's going on right here we oh the next page Back, back. Okay. Um. So here we have stem form, and then right here we have te form. These are both would be translated into English as and. The reason why you might use te form versus stem form, such as with otte, that tends to have a little bit of a so kind of connotations. So here it's kind of saying, since I was chasing Nevity and Bennett, I went into the gap between the houses. So that's why you'd use the te form versus the Heidi. In general, you're not going to see te form used multiple times in one sentence. So normally you would see two uses. The first one's normally te form. The second one's going to be normally um, stem form. Just like in this order right here. That's what you most commonly see. But why you might use one or the other is that te form has a little bit of a so connotation that stem form does not have. Also, a lot of times, if you have a um, ru verb, like taberu or miru, in general, these two guys, you we tend to avoid using them in stem form for and, because it's I, I I rarely ever see them. So you don't normally see mi comma right. That's like very, but you will see like mi de. So that's another one that you may or may not use. So. Ide, if if that was what was going to be popping up, 
uh, it's not super likely to be used simply because it is a new verb, so you'd be more likely to see irete. But with um, how you do, yeah. Does that answer your question? Um, so two points. One is that what te had a slight connotation of uh, cause causations. Yes. And and that also that you say there are certain verbs that tend to go with the stem yes. form as yeah. opposed to the te form. Yeah. Just because of the of the how the language usually Sounds. of how people Yeah. Like me do you're almost never gonna see it. It just sounds it just it, it'd be so short that it'd be easy to miss it. <laughs> and it would just me like that. So it's very unlikely for uh new verbs. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but mm -hmm. I can't think of any time I've seen uh them used versus like this one. And in the next sentence as well, you can see there's another and with um stem form, which isn't a do verb. And you'll see like it a lot, this um ways to say and in Japanese, but you almost never see do verbs like Taberu, which you know is tabeta, right? That's the. But yeah. Uh, okay, let's translate this line then. Hi. So, um, oremo kabano. I also drag. I also, while I was dragging the bag. Right. While um, I was also dra dragging the bag, I. I follow. I chase after Neburi right. and Bennett. And um, following that, I entered the gap, um, the space between the houses. Um, the... The the um, med med medatanai meaning it doesn't stand out. What doesn't stand out? The the staircase that was not that was not not stand out, not noticeable. Right. Um, and also it was soko so, sono saki, meaning it's it's right right in front of the right. the space. The, yes. The, like right, right ahead of it. Right. Um. And then I go down. I go down that staircase. Perfect. Okay, so that is where we'll be stopping today. Any other questions before we go? Um. No question, Moni. Thank you. Nice. So much. Then we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Then. Bye. Bye. Hope he stays healthy. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night.